Hello fellow plastic foes, this is Fulcrum. Now if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you will know that I have made an airsoft bouncing Betty. And when I finally took it out onto the field, it wasn't the most successful. And since then, it's had a complete overhaul, and it's now the BMU-22, or Bounding Mine Unit of 2022. And if you want to see the previous video on this, then make sure you check out the cards and description. Mechanically, not much has changed, but I have cut a huge hole in the side here. This allows you to grab the coupling easily and reset it a lot easier. Inside the base of the mine, I have these two cups here. These hold the tethers, and they stop them from getting tangled up and caught on things on the inside of the mine, which can completely skew the detonation height. The grenades had quite a few changes as well. To start off with, I've got some holes in the side here. These allow me to fill it up with a speed loader. And the Sabos partially block the holes so they stop the BBs from coming back out again. And the reason why I want to load it with a speed loader is because a speed loader puts out between 3 to 4 BBs per push. So that way you can meter the amount you put out. Because you want it to be equal in each one of these compartments. Otherwise, it will be slightly heavy on one side. And I also removed the base cap, which doesn't keep the BBs in anymore because these foam Sabos do and that allows it to fire a lot more consistently because sometimes the doors would get caught on the bottom cap and they'd fire instead of firing all at once they might fire at different intervals or I had a couple of launches actually where it jumped upwards, the spoon flew upwards, the top cap came away but the bottom cap stayed on and in fact it didn't even fire until it hit the floor which is not what I want at all so it fires a lot better and in fact through all of the detonations with this it's fired horizontally and it's a lot more consistent with that firing I also added a strap to it which allows me to sling it over my shoulder and it makes it a lot quicker to deploy. And the motor which fires the mine is a much stronger worm gear motor. It's a bit of a problem because you can't wind it backwards though and you have to do some fancy electronics to be able to reverse it to reset it. But that motor is a lot more reliable than the little servo motor I had before. But the major change to this mine is it's now all self-contained. All of the firing mechanism and all of the electronics, all the things that set the mine off are built into the base of the mine. On the side here we have a battery box which holds onto a 7.4 volt LiPo. And on the top of the mine here we have some passive infrared sensors. These work by detecting body heat so as you move into the sensors view it detects an increase in temperature and it triggers. And when you turn the mine on these sensors are powered up. The problem is when you first turn them on they are going to be triggering all over the place. They're going to be turning off and on. They need to settle down get used to the environment. So there is a 50 second time delay which disconnects these sensors from the firing relay and connects them back up when the 50 seconds is over. That gives you plenty of time to get out of the way and also gives the time for the sensors to become acclimatized to the environment. There we go, so now the mine is on. It won't fire now because there is another feature in the way which I'll get over to in a second. And that feature is this reed switch here which interacts with a magnet on the bottom of the grenade cup. This disconnects the firing mechanism for the relay so that way you don't end up stalling the motor because the motor will keep going if people keep walking past it. That way it disconnects it so you don't have to worry about burning the motor out or frying the electrics. And when you want to reset it you want to push this button here which will wind back the motor because it's a worm drive motor you can't physically push it back and then the collar should go all the way up. Now the detection range of this mine seems to be absolute maximum 10 meters and of course it depends on the conditions of the day if it's wet if it's cold if it's hot if there's a lot of sunlight and it also depends on how much attire the enemy is wearing and it doesn't necessarily mean it will detect someone at that range but you're at risk if you're within 8 to 10 meters of the mine of setting it off and in regards to the BB spray from the grenade it seems to be around about the same you're going to be very very unlucky to get hit by it at 10 meters if it does go off and there's sort of a trefoil shape to the blast pattern so there are a few dead zones however you're not going to know where those dead zones are until it fires so once again, at 10 meters, you're at risk of being hit by this thing if it does fire. Anything closer than that, you're going to have to be very, very lucky to find one of the dead zones when it fires. And you're just going to have to hope that you end up in a dead zone. You just have to hope that no BBs are going in your direction. But as far as I'm concerned, 360 degree radius, 5 meters lethal radius. You're going to have to be very, very, very lucky to not be hit by BBs. Or I'm going to have to set it up very poorly for it to not get anyone at that distance. Now the first time I used this, well it worked, it, in fact it worked really well, it got a guy, uh, the only problem was he was a late arrival to the game and wasn't technically in game yet.
So, yeah, that wasn't technically a kill. I'm not sure if it hit him or not. It does sound like there's a lot of BBs flying around amongst all the foliage and the greenery, but I'm not sure because the camera wasn't particularly good in that light. However, the mine fired, and that was really, really good. I'm just happy that the mine functioned and it fired. I didn't hide it in the ground, incidentally. I had it in a pile of leaves, and you obviously got to keep the sensors clear, and you really want this to be directly against the ground. So you want to push it into the grass or into the leaves to make sure it's sitting on the ground nice and firm because if it's a bit spongy underneath what can happen is the launcher can recoil downwards into the ground and it means you lose a bit of momentum in the grenade and sometimes it might not make it to the end of the string you know and you might end up with the grenade not coming out at the best angle So as you saw in that clip, the actual base of the mine sunk into the grass, which then meant that there was less energy to launch the grenade upwards. It was wasting energy sinking into the ground. So it ran out of energy before it got to the end of the tethers. And what I did at one point is I did put some ground spikes on the side. However, I then took them off because it was just a bit dangerous. Um, couldn't really find a way to cover them up. And when I had all the electronics in the bottom and all of the extra weight from the batteries and all that in it now, it seems to doesn't seem to need those spikes as much because it, it's heavier so but even there you want to make sure it's on nice firm gra uh, ground try and keep it off of the grass if you can and if you do have it in the grass make sure it's sunk into it otherwise the it, it can be a bit iffy with firing although every single time I used it at the last event even in grass it fired perfectly fine the grenade reached the end of the tether and I also think there's a, a lot of importance to making sure you do not overload the grenade the second time I used it I set it up by a major objective in a defensive position however a marshal in fact the head marshal set it off by mistake I yelled at him just before he went near it and managed to get him to stop and he stood right at the edge of the radius of it or what I thought was the radius of it I thought he was way too far away at that point for it to detect him and he stood there for a while and then he appeared to start pacing on camera and that's when it fired. Hey ho, it's what happens. However, I'm really happy he did set it off because he then told me that a load of BBs did hit him and a few other BBs actually went past him. That was a pretty, pretty big distance to cover. So if there was enemies going around the back of the APC, I reckon I could have cleared them out. This, once you set this mine down, you cannot get near it. There's not, I can't even see how you could defuse it. However, a regular viewer of Mine Terminator Bart, make sure you check out his channel, he came up with a really, really clever idea of defeating this mine, which was to throw a blanket over it. Of course, you've got to have a blanket on you, but that's probably not, that's, that's probably the best way of doing it, actually. Because if you can, you've got to get up there quickly because you've got about half a second when it detects you before it starts firing and once the grenade leaves the base you can't dodge it it's like a quarter of a second it's just bang bang you, you cannot dodge the grenade once it fires but if you could get enough weight and momentum behind a blanket and you could just throw it over it you probably could cover it before it fires and contain it the idea I had with trying to defuse it is you'd have to run at it grab the grenade out of the cup keep a hold of the spoon and you'd have to grab it so quickly to avoid it going off. I mean, it's it's a tall order, but then you've got a live grenade in your hands. Or you could try and go for the power switch, but you've got to find it immediately because you're going to have so little time. You're going to have to sprint at it. The best way of getting around this mine for the blue team at Mad Dog, if you're listening, is probably just to try and destroy it in place. Try and set it off from a distance, and I don't know how. You can't. You can shoot at it, but it won't. It won't do anything to it. Shooting it will not set it off. It's, there's nothing you can hit that will set it off. Your best bet is just to try and avoid it. And the idea behind the bounding mine is that they're designed for nice wide open areas and they can cover huge areas. And you know, this will this is a nice bit of area denial here. This will be a 10 meter circle, which you will not be able to approach at risk of being hit by BBs. So if someone sees this, they're not gonna go near it ideally. 
if they don't see it, well, you might get someone with it. So that's the whole point of landmines. They're supposed to be area denial. And I can't wait to use it at the next event. Now, deploying this mine is actually very, very quick. 20 seconds max, I'd say, which is a lot faster than the Claymore. All you've got to do is take the mine off your shoulder, put it down, take the safety pin out, take the safety pin out of the grenade, put the grenade in the cup, turn it on, run. Of course, if you've got cameras, that takes a bit longer, but it's a lot faster to deploy. And after 50 seconds, it's armed, it's ready, it's deadly. So that's it for this video. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed it or found it useful. Check out the older video of this bounding mine in the description down below. And if you want to see more airsoft content, then make sure you subscribe and enable notifications. And as always, guys, play fair, play safe, take care.